Alright, shalom aleichem. Aleichem, shalom. And my wife, man, this is the first time I've ever, I think, in, well, actually I've had um, a lunch break, an interview and a lunch break, and then to meet him again for the first time in person, so I love it. So we gotta make it original now. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you questions that I couldn't ask you uh, there, and now it's only public. So, first of all, for those that don't know, we did a lunch break article together. Uh, a feature company called Promont, right, which is essentially, if I remember correctly, really mapping out in a very unique way for real estate projects. It was an awesome interview. We actually got a lot of feedback from it. But I see in the page you don't have latitude. So you're, you're a multi-dimensional entrepreneur, have a, different, a lot of people, a lot of different ideas. Tell about this company, Latitude, and what do you hear about it for? So Latitude is actually a, uh, so to speak, a child of Promont, because what we did was we triangulated the three businesses that I have to achieve one goal. So I originally started with Promont, which was a construction management company, and that's still ongoing. That's the core of the business. Um, been doing that for about 25 years. And then from there, I outcropped into um, pre-construction -co pre coordination, which I opened up a um, building information modeling company, which is called SmartCon. And we used that technology to achieve better results. That was mind-blowing. That, yeah. that was like revolutionary in the industry. So right. And then um, um, New York City government is like the gift that keeps on giving. They came <laughs> up, they know how to take yeah, it. Yeah. So they came up with a new law called Local Law 97, which uh, impacts any building above 25,000 square foot. And essentially, it's a very high demand on energy savings and energy consumption and, re and the restriction on energy consumption for those buildings. So what we did was we spent uh, four years studying that law and uh, I hired an in-house architect, a sustainability architect and in-house coordinators and essentially they studied that law and the impacts that it's going to have in about 50,000 buildings in New York City. So what we did was we used our experience in construction and the experience that we have with uh, building information modeling and launched a company called Latitude, which is now coming to the forefront because the New York City law, with the first uh, set of laws is, is hitting in 2024, and then the second more expensive set so, of laws so is So explain the concept. I own a couple of buildings. I don't know that's a problem right now, which is a big issue in selling, right? And you say, hey, listen, you got to know about this. What's your selling point to a company like that? What so are you very simple. About? Local law 97 is, there's plenty of local laws in New York City, but every local law essentially deals with one thing. Local law 11 deals with the facade. So it's easy. As a building owner, you have to replace the facade or repair the facade. You give it out to three contractors. They give you a price on what it costs to repair the facade. You repair the facade, you file the paperwork, and you're done. Local law 97 essentially deals with the energy consumption of the building. So there are multiple different parts of, of the building and multiple different building systems that deal with that. So it could be from the boiler to the electric to the windows to the insulation. So it's a multifaceted law that deals with multi, multiple different building systems. So in order to deal with that, it's not like a one quick fix of I'm going to hire this up to do that and do this and do that. You have to deal with the building as one, we like to call it like the patient. The, the building is a patient. It's got a uh, plumbing system, it's got an electrical system, it's got all these systems that need to be cured. And in order to cure them, you have to hire different subs and different but, consultants. But, but are you, the issue you're facing, I think, is education, right? People right. are not aware of this problem and what they need to do. So how do you face that balance? Hey, by the way, not only do you need to do it, but you have to pay me to, have to take care of you. How do you balance that? Right, so anybody that's in the, in the business of either owning real estate or managing real estate in New York City they know it's coming. knows there's a law of Local 97, that's a behemoth of a law, and everybody knows that it's a scary law and they have to deal with it. They don't exactly know how to deal with it, and that's why we're in business. So. The, the point is that they should come to us and we offer a turnkey solution on how to deal with all these What is issues. that solution? How do, you, how do you price that out? So the first thing we do is we do an analysis on the building and we tell them where the potential issues are going to be. And then we, we give them a framework on how to fix those issues. Now, the reason that I said we triangulated everything and put all the experience together is let's say there's a building that, that it comes up from the report that they have to change the windows in the entire building in order to comply with Local 097. Now they can go and change all those windows, they can hire a contract to change all those windows, but how do they know at the end of the day that that fix actually works? Yeah. Right? So they could spend a few million dollars fixing all their windows and then they're still not compliant because you do the testing after it. So what we're able to do is we will do the report and then we then can scan their entire building and before the 3D, they do the work before system. they do the work. We install the spec of the windows into the system, into the model, and we can actually test it in the virtual world to show that these windows will solve the problem. I love so it. that's, and then after that, we will manage the work of actually changing those windows for them to make sure that it's done correctly. That's amazing. So you know, today, how many people work in your company, all three together? Um, the exact number I won't share, but it's uh, over 30. Over 30. It's 30 plus. Just like your yeah. age, right? We stop at yeah, 40, exactly. we say the same idea. So how long have you been coming to OGBA for? 
I've been coming year? no, I've been coming for about four years. This is my second year exhibiting. Have you have you seen results since last year since you were here? Like have you actually gotten some business from it? So I don't know that you can quantify specifically to say that you have business, but listen, if you just look outside, I mean if you wanna be known and you want name recognition, this is the place to get it, especially in the Hamish community. I mean, can I know it's not normal what you see out there? It's amazing, but name recognition doesn't bring you business unless it actually does. So no, name recognition I, does bring you business. So explain it. So what does that mean? How does that actually bring you business? So First of all, if you're if you're on a table, right, and somebody's considering pricing for multiple people, and there's let's say three people on the table, two of them he's never heard of, and one of them he's heard of, then obviously it's easier for the oh, one that he's heard of to I get like him. That. I like that. So name recognition is very important. I mean, this, the the corporations around the world spend billions of dollars on name sure, recognition. Sure. No, I'm asking in, in in a place like this because a lot of people. It, it's been actually fascinating to me. It's the first time I'm here, to be honest, and so many people have told me that when they come, you would think, hey. It's exactly like I have to be here. Baruch Hashem, my have did an amazing job. And then it became a scenario where everyone has to be at OGBA. And yet a place even that you have to be, people are still making new connections all the time. It's an yeah. amazing thing. Yeah. Have you found that as well? You made new connections within the industry to help so you? I made connections. We solidified other connections that we've had. And, um, you know, the world likes to, likes to say that the, the Jewish people are the landlords of the world. Well, okay, great. I hope so. Because that's why we're here. So. <laughs> I love it. So one thing I'm just going to follow up on my article. But I asked you then how you deal with stress. And it was a hard Shiloh you to handle, right? You're like, I don't know, I'm saying I'm usually, I don't know. So now that's already a few months later, since we did an article, let's let's revisit that question. How do you handle stress in life? When you're a busy lachas digger guy, what do you do? You're nervous. You, you don't work. handle it, you just, you, you live with it. And you just, you learn to, you know, to, to, to mitigate it and uh, to, to not make it part of your of your day-to-day. -day. A, a guy told me earlier, what do you say? He says, I don't do stress, I give stress to others. <laughs> yes, I said, that was a real good answer. Yeah, that's but, true. But, when, but when you yourself are nervous, how He's do you probably one of my it? clients then. <laughs> <laughs> right. now, how do you target, try to handle things in your life? You just, you, listen, you have, to, you have to wake up and go to sleep every night with, I'm not gonna try to preach to Emuna, but that's the bottom line. As somebody told me, you know, you he's my competition. Leader, he yeah. said, he's not, you know, competition is not a Jewish word. Because competition means you're taking something from me. We believe that you're not taking anything from you're me. The Rabbi Nishleilam gave me whatever I'm supposed to get. He's like going to give him whatever he's supposed to get, and that's it. I like, tell me a story of somebody you met What's It could be this event or any expo that, that you actually kept a connection with and ended up developing the business, that you remember something. Like a connection that, you know, you just made a glance connection, but it ended up being something serious. Specifically, I can't, can't think of anything, but I constantly have, you know, I walked into a meeting the other day, and there was somebody there that I met back in my early days when I was building uh, private residences, and he's been following me on LinkedIn. And you know, and it, it, would, it developed into a, a future relationship. If that's gonna end up being business or not, I don't know. But there's a, you, never, you, never, you never have something called a bad connection. Connections are very important to have, and networking is very important to have, and you never know when it comes in to help you. Literally on my way in, somebody just met me here. He says that he gave somebody a reference on me and we've never done business. This person I gave a reference, I mean, he's never done business for me. He's a subcontractor. And, you know, hopefully one day we will do business together. And he said, you know, I gave a reference on you. I gave good reference on you because we've, we've interacted in the past. So there's no such thing as a bad networking event. I love it. Let me ask you a question. You have family members who work for you, correct? I have family members that work ne for me. Nieces and nephews? I have nieces, nephews. My daughter works for me. How do you balance that family business? Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be their uncle, the tata? Like, how do you Simple, how do you I can it? call them at all times. They can't say no. Ah, <laughs> you think there's advantages to it. There's okay. definitely advantages. I love it. Okay, this advantage is only when you have to fire them. Uh, <laughs> Which hopefully never happens. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.